Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Medical Talk. Today we have with us Dr. Zubeda Sirang Asi. Dr. Zubeda is an ophthalmologist from Chitral. She is the author of a book called Optics Made Easy and we are very honored to have Dr. Zubeda here with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Vitaq. Thank you so much for having me here and I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be um, able to talk to all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I would like to start the conversation by talking a bit about your early life. Where were you born and raised and what was your early education like? And how did it contribute to your decision of becoming a doctor? Um, Anosha, I was born in Abdabad. Um, so I know it's, it's kind of a very scattered thing. Uh, so I was born in Abdabad and then I was raised in Chitral, partially initially and then we moved to Maldan. So basically my parents were in the education department so they moved very frequently to different places. Mm -hmm. So I had a kind of very pluralistic kind of childhood in which we had to move a lot to different cities. Um, so that was it. So um, regarding the reason uh, regarding my choice to join a medical profession to be very honest with you I never had this crazy idea before like in my early childhood. I always wanted to be a mathematician, to be honest, because I was so good in maths. So, and, and then later on, I was good in physics as well. Yeah. So, uh, but um, mom wanted me to become a doctor. And then there were other reasons as well. Um, so I had to stop my, you know, my, I wasn't very passionate about engineering or something either. So I had to join medicine. Yeah. That's great. So you did your medical school from Akhan Medical College in Karachi. What was that move like? Did you face any difficulties moving from Chitral, a northern area, to a place like Karachi? Uh, not at all, to be honest, Anushik. Uh, because as I told you earlier, we had to move to different places. Uh, so I had this, I, I had this flexibility during my early childhood um, uh, to adapt to different places, to different circumstances, different people. Um, so moving to Karachi was a bit different, but not too different. So it was okay. We, I didn't have, um, I, I wouldn't say that there was difficulty adjusting. And then the, the people were so nice. Like AQ has kind of a very a kind of diverse, uh, diverse kind of environment, I would say. So you you get to see lots of people from different cities, from different countries. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's a diverse environment, and the, the people, the teachers are so cooperative. And then um, I got to have very, um, I was lucky to have very nice friends here. That was still my strength. Um, so yeah, so it wasn't too difficult. Yeah, I can relate to that. I've moved a lot yeah. during my life as well. So I think it's easier for people who've moved a lot. Exactly, to adjust to exactly. It's very difficult when you're moving, but it, yeah. it's very easy later on. Yeah. yeah, you get used to it. Yeah, a lot of medical students, I think most of them in Karachi, especially, they have this mindset that they want to go to the US or the UK to practice and then they prefer staying there due to personal reasons or other reasons. So why did you decide to come back to Pakistan? Was it a conscious decision since the beginning or did you decide that after specialization in Ireland? I get to uh, hear this question, this question a lot. Um, I would say it was a conscious decision uh, because I never had this craze to go to US or UK or Ireland. I went there, I went to Ireland for my specialization, but that for training only. Mm -hmm. And uh, my in-laws are actually in US and in Houston. So it was very easy for me to go to US, um, even if I were not a doctor. Um, so yeah, so uh, so the the idea of coming back was always there. Like I never wanted to settle abroad. I'm I'm kind of a person who would love to go to different places, um, to have experiences. But I would love to come back home. You know, so that's that's how I am. Yeah. So what is your advice to medical students who get peer pressured into taking the USMLE exams or the PLAB exams just because everyone else is doing that and if they really want to stay in Pakistan? Um, yeah, I would say never, uh, never, never follow the crowd. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't follow the crowd. Like, but that's how I am. Yeah, you don't need to um, go ahead and do something because your friends are doing, or you don't need to show it to someone, right? You don't need to show your capabilities or abilities to somebody because just because your classmates are doing you ask me then I would say 98% of the AQ graduates they go to US so that's how the crowd at AQ is mm -hmm. um, and now the other medical students are following the same path um, so it's not you shouldn't you shouldn't do anything without conscious decision without mindful decision without 
your, your, your heart and your mind in it. So it's very really important that you need to make sure because it's, it's your, your whole life depends on that sole decision. So you really need to make sure that it's based on your own choices, your own circumstances, not because of peer pressure. That's great advice. That's really helpful. Yeah. So you received the CPSP scholarship and you did your specialization from Ireland. What was that experience like? And how do you think that Pakistani medical students and graduates can apply for that scholarship? Um, so they would be different. Like when I started my um, training, I started from Aachen University, um, again, after my house job. And uh, it was uh, kind of a thing which I started with the um, with both the FRCS pathway and FCPS pathway, right? So I got done with my part one in both the exams. So I was registered with the CPSP. Okay. And when I was done with my IMM, mm -hmm. so once you're done with your um, intermediate module, during the residency, you can apply for those scholarships in which you go, you, you can go abroad and your training is basically recognized by the CPSP as well as the training body of that particular country. Like for example, if you want to go to Ireland, then that is the HSC CPSP scholarship program. If you want to go to UK, that is a different scholarship program. So I wanted to go to Ireland. So that's why I applied for this one. Um, and I, I went there. So if somebody or some medical student student or a trainee uh, wants to apply, they can get more information from the CPSP website. Um, and uh, if they want to go there, then they just need to get done with the IMM and they need to check whether they need to do something else like IELTS and stuff. And once they're done with that, they can, they can easily go like once they're done with the interviews and stuff and they're selected. Yeah. And some people don't come back. So don't do that. Now, talking about your book, I think that is a huge achievement. You have also received the Pride of Pakistan Award for that. So how did you think of writing that book? What was the idea behind that? And who was your inspiration? Um, so Anusha, I have been... Uh, so my inspiration is my father. Actually, he's a writer. Um, so I have been a writer. I would say not a, a writer, writer, but a, a kind of a very... Um, I, I, I used to write those stories during my childhood, like those stories for children magazines and, you know, um, so I was kind of a small little writer in my childhood. And then during my medical school, because we were so busy during our medical studies, we don't usually um, go ahead with our hobbies because, you know, we're so busy and stuff. Um, so I have always been a very kind of avid reader but, and a writer, a small little writer as well. Um, so I have the germs in me somewhere. Um, but when I was studying for my exam, actually, so uh, the idea came from there because the optics is thought to be a very, um, you know, tough subject for the trainees and for the medical students both. Um, so when I was studying for my optics exam, I kind of, um, I found it you know, difficult as well, because, you know, it's lots of physics, you know, and the medical students are not very fluent in physics. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I, as I told you earlier, I always loved physics. So that was something um, that was my kind of first love that was rekindled yeah. when I was starting for my exam. Um, so I, I gave it so much time and then I started from different books and then I kind of wrote my own notes. I made those diagrams, the way diagrams and, you know, all those stuff. And once I was done with the exam, I felt like before the exam, I found those notes very, very helpful. Mm -hmm. So those were my like, you know, before the exam reading notes. And uh, once I was done with the exam and I was like, I thought to kind of, you know, give them the shape of small little book um, so that they can be, you know, the, the students and the trainees can get benefit out of them. Yeah. So, and then I thought to publish them on Amazon. Amazon is a site where you can go and publish your books free of cost. So yeah, that was the idea. I think that was a great idea. I think a lot of medical students are running away from this. I think it's a great idea to help them in that. Yeah, please do that. If you have an idea, if you want to read a book, if you want to write a book, if you want to write any kind of fiction or um, some book related to your subject, then just go to Amazon KDP and publish your book and nobody's going to judge you. So publishing on Amazon, you mentioned that it's free of cost. Is it a simple yeah. process or do you need to get a certification or something for that or like a license for publishing? No, nothing. So basically it's free of cost and you don't need anything. You just need to have a book mm -hmm. and you can, you can even have, like I got my front page uh, the front page was done by one of the professional 
people from Fiverr, but you can even have the front page on the Amazon. The Amazon just can give you the front page and that is free of cost as well. So yeah, if you want to publish a book, that is totally free of cost. So you can just go to the Amazon, you can, you can just um, uh, click on the KDP, Amazon KDP, and you can make an account there and then you can publish your book there. But you, I think you need a bank account, a foreign bank account. That's it. I make a koi dal de <laughs> Thank you so much for mentioning that. I think a lot of yeah. students and even students don't know that it's so easy to publish on Amazon. If you have a good book, then you can just go and publish it. Even if you don't have a good book, Anusha, hmm. I never thought that my book was good, to be honest. I still don't think that it's a good book. So it's one <laughs> of those books, right? So you can just go there and you can just publish it. That's great. So do you have any advice for someone? Because I know a lot of my friends who are interested in literature and writing and they want to publish books. Do you have any advice for them? Because obviously medical school is a lot in itself. So what advice do you have for them? Um, Anusha, I would say because I, I, I never wrote anything during my medical studies either. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of tough. It's very really tough to manage your time and it's tough to manage everything along with your studies. But if, but if you're very really passionate about writing, then read a lot. Like I used to read a lot. So I still, I still read a lot. So if you get time, then just read something. If you're interested in writing, then you have to read. You have to be a good reader to be a good writer. So that is my advice, I would say. Uh, talking about Pakistan and in general, how female doctors in Pakistan find it very difficult to work after they get married because of societal pressures. And there is the concept of Dr. Bahu that's still very prevalent in our society. How do you think that we can tackle that as medical students to change the mindset of our society? Start from ourselves, I guess, um, because we cannot change the whole society until, unless we change ourselves, right? And our own mindset and our own mentality. And that would start from ourselves, our brothers, their wives, if they are going to get married with a, with a female doctor, then we really need to make sure that she's getting equal chances of, you know, getting the post-graduation degree and, you know, um, the, the equal choices, I would say, equal, that is women empowerment. You don't give, you don't get women empowered just becoming a doctor, right? Or, or just getting married to a doctor. Yeah. So you really need to make sure that you're going to get, you're going to have equal choices in life. Yeah. So if if a man can go abroad and study, if a, if, a, if a male doctor is going to go to work at night, or if a male doctor is free to go into his um you know um to his favorite subspeciality, then it it should be the same for the female as well, right? It shouldn't be different. And I am I I I am really um surprised to see this kind of mindset in our society that of they really want this um you know dr bahu uh, just to show the people that they have got this dr bahu then the dr bahu has to work in the kitchen you know uh, or take care of the household or the family or whatever so i i it's 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 really it's um it's sad it's unfortunate but we i think it it needs to be tackled by starting from ourselves, I guess, and our, our new ones. I think it's really important to start working on this on a yeah. personal level and then go beyond that. Then we can go ahead and start awareness sessions, I guess, if you are related to the media or if I'm related to the media or if we have some voice on social media, then we should really start, um, you know, creating awareness among the public that, you know, doctors are made to do medicine they can do medicine as well as they can they can you know have family they don't need to choose either of the two yeah. so that should be you know that's and that's not a privilege that is oh that is their right yeah. you know Yes. Yeah, that's very important. So you are also working in Chitral to build better facilities and eye care facilities for the people of Chitral. What has that experience been like and what are some of the challenges you faced during that time? So Anusha, thank you so much for asking this because it's very, it's very challenging actually. Um, yeah. I've been working both in Chitral and Gilgit Baltistan mm -hmm. and um, it's um, and the reason why it came back, one of the reasons was to actually establish this ophthalmology setup in, in the north because there's a huge gap. 
uh, especially in those subspecialities, like you would find medical doctor and general surgeon, but you wouldn't find ophthalmologist. I'm the only ophthalmologist from Upper Chitra. Um, it's, it's challenging. Actually, I've been working on it for the past one and a half year. So, um, but it's not, it's, it's good, Alhamdulillah. It's very rewarding. It's kind of difficult in terms of being far-flunked area, um, but Alhamdulillah, since I'm associated with Ahan University and we are doing it under Ahan Health Service Pakistan, so uh, we are better equipped. We have got like, high tech um, in, um, equipments. We have got like good um, human resources uh, mm -hmm. trained from EKU. So it's, it's, it's good now, yeah. Thank you so much for doing that. And I think you're making such a big contribution to the healthcare system of this country. Thank you for doing that. Thank you, yeah. Thank you. I'm trying my best. How do you see medicine in Pakistan 50 years from now? 50 years from now? Um, yeah, if we don't have the same brain drain that we are facing right now, yeah. then it's 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 all good but um with all the brain drain on all the doctors going abroad then it's a bit gloomy i would say how do you think we can tackle this entire brain drain situation because there are a lot of very capable doctors going abroad and then they stay there obviously they do come back and contribute in whatever ways they can but they're not here so how do you think that we can probably decrease that yeah so anusha it's it's, it's a lot of work actually it's it's not some it's not, it cannot be done on individual level, I guess. It, it needs a lot, uh, a lot to be done on the part of the government, on the part of the medical bodies that are working in Pakistan and uh, on the part of the medical schools. Um, it, it, this should be the part of the curriculum, right? Um, so, um, you know, individual based decisions are only uh, effective for the individuals, right? Like if I am coming back, then um, it's it's just I took the decision. I didn't see um, it, it, you, you, that was my own priority, right? It wasn't something that um, that would be applicable to everybody. I cannot really tell someone else to to come back just because I came back. Yeah. So um, government really needs to work on it. There should be better work. Uh, environment there should be better work opportunities there shouldn't be um the, the the work harassment that the doctors are facing these days um it it, it should be tackled mm -hmm. and uh, the you know they should be given good um, um stipend or good salary uh, based on their degrees or based on their qualifications um so and I think these these needs the, the, the things need to be done on the government level yeah. and the economy. You know, look at our economy. It should be you know it should it's something that really needs a complete um, you know a puri usko change karne ki zarurat. I think if try cheezon ko if we look into this, to kuch na kuch kami aa jayegi brain drain. Exactly. I think that brings us to the end of our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us. This was actually so insightful. I think a lot of people and medical students, and especially females, will take a lot of inspiration from you because you're doing so much for our country. Thank you so much for coming.